Hey guys, how are you? I'm doing quite well. I hope you're doing well as well. That's a lot of wells in a little bit of, uh, of area. Well, well, well. Um, hi. Uh, long time, no, no see, but not as long as the last time. I've started talking and Princess has come in to see what I am talking about. She's rubbing up against the tripod now, but since I have, uh, don't jiggle on, you probably won't notice. Um, anyway, so I just got back from uh, Stitches West, which, Stitch West, I'm going to have problems with this because Stitches West is a big yarn con convention um, in San Jose in January, but Stitch West was just put on by uh, the incomparable uh, Debbie and Kefren of Snug Harbor Crafts. And so we went and we had a grand time. And just in case you're wondering, I did not put in a single cross stitch, not a single one, but that's all right. So uh, it was this past weekend, Stitch West, and Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Uh, I took Thursday and Friday off of work and uh, packed up all my stuff Thursday morning and wandered on up to Farmington. It was only an hour drive from here. Uh, really quick, really close. Um, got there before my best friend Lisa, who uh, came to the, uh, the fun shindig with me. And uh, came into the room, met people, sat down, started stitching. Um, we were greeted with these wonderful little boxes that Debbie had made. Um, filled with candy and treats and everything. And I think I'm going to use my little box to put all the little trinkets in as I show them off to you. Um, after I checked in, I had I had promised myself, you know, that a, a, a couple things. One, I was going to be more social than I was at Stitch Nanigans, and I tried really, really hard. And two, I wasn't going to choose a table in the corner. I was going to sit in the middle where there would be more people uh, around so you could, you know, lean and talk to the people over here, lean and talk to the people over here, and not just be limited to my very own table. I failed you guys. Instead of picking the table in the corner in the back, I picked the table in the corner in the front. But that's okay, because I met some fantastic people. The uh, wonderful people around my table um, included uh, Ray, who is a, a local, uh, a Utah girl. Um, she was super sweet, really nice, had a great time talking to her. Uh, so much so that when people would uh, wander in there, they'd be like, oh, how long have you known each other? And would say about an hour, hour and a half, something like that. Um, so we had a good time uh, chatting. And then on the other side of me, sorry, Princess, is investigating all of the uh, fun accoutrements that I have put on a chair over here. And the, she's... Uh, got all the needle minders are starting to magnet together. Can you get down? You're in the way. You're not helping. Shall I pick you up and show you to the people? Because I know you love that. No? All right. Anyway, so to the left of me, uh, Kathy Lloyd and her sister Jody sat, and around next to them was Rika of... Uh, House of Stitch and Stash, and Rika was a delight and absolutely hilarious, which is not meaning to shortchange the rest of the people because everybody was a delight and, and a lot of fun. Uh, next to Rika was uh, Kay, one of um, Debbie's friends, and Kay brought Laura and Marcy. Marcy was a delight, absolutely a delight, and then Ray and Lisa and I, and everybody was it was fun. We had a great time. Probably a quieter table, but you know, that's all right. So I guess if I started out with this a little gifty, let's go with all the adorable things that were brought around and gifted. I'll start with this absolutely adorable tiny pincushion that uh, Kathy made. She made one for everyone at her table. Um, plus maybe a couple more for some of the folks that she has known long time are in her uh, stitchy group that happened to be at um, Stitch West. And so she handed those out and they were absolutely adorable. Uh, let's see, next we had uh, gender, gen, oh guys, Jennifer and Lorinda. Uh, they made these beautiful, guess who's got to the, to the, uh, Cat, you're not helpful. Stand the mannequin up. Anyway, 
uh, Jordan and Lorinda, anyway, they made these beautiful scissor fobs uh, for everybody. And they're just so sparkly and, and sparkly and, and cute and wonderful. And I'm at a loss for words, as you can tell. Uh, cute little uh, scissor fob, scissor dangler. So I'm looking at, I only have like two pairs of scissors over here, not at like at home in my main craft room. Let's see. These, where'd the little hedgehog go? There he is. Cute little hedgy. <laughs> it would be all right if the cat hadn't got into anything. Anyway, uh, Ray, who sat next to us, she made these adorable little needle minders. They were a lot of hedgy hogs. She is very fond of hedge hedgehogs, so that's why the hedgehogs. So she brought one of those for everybody in the room. Let's see what else was passed out uh, from Gazelle's needlework. I think it was uh, Renee who was there who passed them out. Um, little uh, floss floss ring with a pumpkin uh, pumpkin bell attached, and a little charm. Look at that haunted house charm. It's really quite fun, adorable, and they were packaged in these darling little uh, bags with the Happy Halloween cat on them. Good for any numeral, any number of things like stitch markers when I'm knitting. Tuck those in there. Let's see. What else was passed out? At the very, very end of the show, or, yeah, we'll call it a show, whatever. On, on Saturday, Debbie had made all of these amazing uh, little Christmas ornaments, one for everybody. I had to leave early, so uh, Kef handed this to me as I was headed out the door because I had to go to work and work a football game. Um, it was homecoming. It's Saturday, so Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Today's Tuesday, and I haven't even bothered to look up if we won or lost the game. So uh, I'm assuming we lost because I'm a pessimist and I know how the team's been doing. And also the guys weren't terribly excited in the audience or in the office the next morning. Let's see. That goes with that, and then the uh, uh, incomparable, the wonderful Rika. She uh, gave everybody who sat at her table a little needle minder with the uh, House of Stitch and Stash. And so those were the lovely gifts that were handed out and passed around. Oh, there's one more, but I'll get to it later. What I, I bought, um, I bought one of these stitch markers from Rika. This is Stitch West. She did the hand calligraphy for it, took a photo, processed it, and sent it over to one of her friends who has a glow forge. They did all the burning and the wonderful stuff. Cute. And let's see, from Crickle, Cricklewood Crossing, um, she couldn't be there. She had to go fly back to Australia at the very last minute um, to see to uh, see to um, take care of you know things because her mom had passed away. But Deb and Kef had many of the things that she had planned to bring and sell, and I bought this. Um, scissor fob from her with the, has a bee and then the little heart charm has the state of Utah on it. So that was a little little tiny little cute thing. So that'll go on my scissors. And then I also picked up this tiny little needle minder um, which has just a little Japanese girl on it. And I I really like many things Japanese so that just spoke to my heart. Pansies and Japanese girls. That sounded weirder than it meant to be. Anyway, things from Japan I, I, I adore. I have a fondness for Japan. So those were the uh, the gifts and the purchases and um, the fun stuff. Uh, I have to confess that I did not go to Shepherd's Bush. Um, I mean, really, it's one of my local needlework stores, so whenever I want to go to jo Shepherd's Bush, I usually I can and I do. But seeing as my, my cross-stitch bug is pretty dead, I, I didn't see the point. I didn't see the point. I knew I would find something and spend my money, but it wouldn't be something that I'm planning to stitch 
right away or right now or like that. So I just, uh, I just stayed and stitched and knit. I knit the whole time. Like I said, I didn't do a single cross stitch thing. So I didn't go to, where else did they go? Oh, they went down to the craft center of fine stitchery and I didn't go with them then. That was on Saturday and I had to leave early anyway. So I just stayed and stitched and had a lovely time and, um, stayed and stitched, had a lovely time. I mean, really, that's what I, all I can say. Um, it was a lot of fun. I think Deb and Kef made excellent, excellent use of the uh, registration fees. Uh, they managed to stretch those fees not only for the conference room, but for um, lunches in the afternoons. Uh, one day we had uh, Zupa, so sandwich salad soup. Um, one of the soups was a, a chicken, or not chicken broccoli, a cheddar broccoli. And it was absolutely delicious, and I really loved the soup, and I ate way too much of the soup. That was the day that I, I commented to my friend, I regret every single thing that I have eaten today because I have eaten so much. Kill me now. Just... Um, we had a salsa, salsa desserts on Thursday. We had um, Cutler's Cookies on Friday night. And Saturday night they had cake, but I had had to leave early. Uh, so I wasn't, wasn't there. Um, I did not take any photos or videos or anything of the, the retreat because I find that I'm very much a live in the moment person. And so while I'm being in the moment and enjoying the moment, I don't think to take those pictures or record, you know, what's going on and going on around me. So, so that's all right. Um, let's see. Kev caught me briefly on their live that I did. And you guys, can I have been even any more awkward? I don't think so. Well, maybe, but I don't think so. Anyway, so that was, I saw, I watched that today or yesterday while I was at work and I'm like, ooh, awkward. Haha. <laughs> anyway, um, what else was going on? Um, I didn't even remember to take a picture of the thing that I had made up for my, um, my small swap. Um, I did stitch up Lizzie Kate's I Can Drive a Stick and I gave it to my best friend Lisa and she finished it out in a couple of so like a flat fold but not a flat fold so like a flat thing and she framed it up in um, a beautifully shaped um, I'll say frame it's not a frame like wood but you know you cut out the uh, the foam core she covered it with fabric um, covered another piece of foam core with my stitch piece, put that on the front piece, and then framed it out with another cut piece that she wrapped in fabric. So it looked frame, and then put a chains on the back so you could either hang it on the wall or it can sit in an easel or maybe be at the back of a basket, you know, kind of a tall piece holding things up. Anyway, it was super cute, and uh, Kim Kim Butler, Kimberly Butler, um, chose my bag, and she was super, super thrilled with that, so I'm, I'm so excited. I don't know if she liked the stitch piece better or the uh, silly little tiny, about three inch tall, uh, witch's hat that I threw in the bag, too, because she wore her witch's hat the rest of the retreat, and that just, that just made my little soul sing. Um, what I received... Let's pull it out. Uh, it was from uh, Deanne Bales, or Granny X-Stitch, as you know her, because she's one of the basic bunch. So, her cute little note. And she stitched up this, uh, it's a Sue Hillis design, and it says, he will work for freezer space. Super cute. And she backed it on, put it on this little backer that has an easel stand, so it'll easily stand on a shelf, or flat on the wall or whatever and she did an ex whoever finished it did an excellent job with the uh the fabric um it's not a ribbon well this they did an excellent job the quality is fantastic and so he is such a cute cute little snowman and i can definitely put him out in January when I've taken down all the Christmas and my house is looking a little bit sad for lack of all the sparkly and the lights so he will work wonderfully so thank you thank you very much Grandma X Stitch I saw her and gave her a hug for it while we were there let's see speaking of the basic bunch um, little stitch girl Jordan X Stitch 
um, who has broken into the design world and is doing really quite well, designed some Christmas ornaments uh, for, uh, for Deb and Kef, and she explains a little bit more about it on her review of uh, Stitch West. Um, anyway, and so I should take them out of the uh, bag. No, I'm lazy. I'm not. Anyway, so we were gifted with the three ornaments. Here's Santa and his, his team going over a lighthouse. We have an anchor all decked out in Christmas lights. And down here we have a ship's wheel decked out to be a Christmas wreath was for Snug Harbor Crafts. And then they went and kitted everything up for uh, this wonderful little ornament and included that with the package. So I've got some lovely tan Ada and all the flosses to go into that. So that's ready to go. The drop of a hat as soon as I, I find my stitchy bug again. So that's sort of the uh, uh, brief, fast sum up for that. Let's put this over here. Let me show you what I, uh, I worked on during the entirety of, of the retreat. Um, as part of my uh, hello and review for the thing. So I've been working on Perfect Blend by Casa Pinka, and it is her mystery knit along from this summer. And right now I'm on the last, the last stitch uh, thing to be doing. But when I got to the retreat, I had one row on this light lavender to go. Um, this is Lavender Lemonade, and it's a candy shop yarn. So I did this um, section with the slip stitch zigzag going back and forth. And uh, that took a lot of concentration and a lot of thought to get right. Um, this garter section bit was super cute. This is a marionated yarns and amethyst. This is uh, the uh, yarn berry. Um, I think the color is Mistress Mary, quite contrary. Then I did this section right here, which has a super simple eyelet, um, stacked eyelets. This is Willy Wonka, and it is also Candy Shop Yarns. And then I finished up with another garter section from Candy Shop Yarns. So I did all that, those several sections, while I was um, at, at the retreat. Um, this other bit, I worked on um, on Sunday and I'll show you so you can see right here I'm getting some laddering where I put in my stitch markers and I really don't like that so I think I'm going to rip back my three rows and re-knit those so I really pay attention to my tension when I'm moving the uh, stitch markers around yeah I've got laddering over every single one of them and that just means I've been sloppy um, I was sloppy when I was um, doing that. So, like the first, the first set of stitches is okay, but the next two, the next two rows are are way too sloppy. But that's because when I, I get to this big, I like to put this on like the table in front of me so it carries the weight. But I was working on this in a place where I had it sat in my lap, and so um, the weight of it was stretching it a bit too much, making my. Uh, um, the distance that I normally have between the uh, the project and around my finger where I tension it was just it was just a little too great so that's that's that so that is my plan for tomorrow actually I'm going up to uh, one of my friends house in Salt Lake City with Lisa again and uh, we're going to crafty stitchy night so tomorrow I plan on um, ripping back those two to three three rows that I did and re-knitting them making sure my tension is nice and tight um, when I go over the stitch markers and not leave them loose so that there is a lot of laddering um, I'll show you the uh, the remaining cakes. So this is this is color one. This is Willy Wonka. This is color two. Lavender lemonade. These are both candy shop yarns. I'm going to run out of hands really quick. Um, color three is this wonderful pink from the Yarn Brary. Um, Mistress Mary. Let's see how I do on ba balancing. You didn't know you were going to get to see a juggling act today, now did you? And this is the Amethyst, which is a marionated yarn, Scrumptious HT, my other solid color. So, 
super, super pleased um, with all the project progress that I got done on that while I was at the retreat. So that is everything for my retreat review. And next I'll show, let me, I need to reset a little bit. So I'm going to reset and then I'll bring up the project that I've been working on at work, my Goldfish Memories. And then I'll do a little bit of a review of Stitches SLC. And that's a lot of yarn and that's a lot of stash, my friends. But um, yeah, not much cross stitch. I have finally, I think I came, have figured it out that when I finished the... Um, Stony Creek's Oh Holy Night for my grandmother. I think I had been working on that just way too seriously with a deadline, you know, having it in mind that I wanted it to, to get done at a certain time. And I think that piece, when I was done with it, is what has killed my cross-stitch bug. And so you guys know that that past year from February, you know, knitting kind of went like this and stitching kind of went like this. And so I figure it'll be another two to three years before my stitching bug is uh, ready to go again. Uh, but until then, I'm just enjoying all the knitting. So there you have it. Anyway, reset time. So the other uh, knitting project that I'm working on is Goldfish Memory. This is also a pattern from Casa Pinka. You can see up there that I'm using three colors of uh, Malabrigo fingering yarns. I've got Indonesia, Reflecting Pool, and Water Green. My note's right there so I don't forget it. Princess has come back to nudge everything. We'll see if she manages to knock the, uh, the dress form over again because that would so be like her. Let's see. Okay, so since I talked to you guys last, I have finished this big green section right here. It was uh, charted to be stitched in garter stitch, but I hate garter stitch, so I did it in stockinette instead. But I have returned to um, garter stitch as called for in the pattern for this set of uh, stripes right here. So I've got two, four, I've got eight more of those garter uh, stripes to do again before I uh, start on the uh, next sort of portion of the pattern. Princess, you're in the way, sweetheart. No, 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 no. Um, anyway, so this is my at work project. I haven't really been feeling the knitting at work thing lately, so not a lot has been accomplished. So we will tuck that back into, let's see, this goes, it is primary, primarily living in um, this wonderful bucket that I happened to pick up at Stitch Nanigans in the uh, uh, Smalls Exchange. It was a fantastic smalls exchange and I really need to up my game up my game let me slip that back in here you can only see my shoulder while I'm talking randomly okay let's put that to the side so uh, stitches SLC um, sort of a convention marketplace classes um, it was their first year in Salt Lake City, and I really enjoyed it. I signed up for four classes. Um, I took a class on learning how to knit brioche. So I have just a super basic, low-level understanding of brioche. I don't think I'll be terribly intimidated by it, um, should I decide to do a pattern that has a little bit of that on it. Um, two, I took a... Uh, uh, a class about um, how to pick up stitches. So if you're doing um, like a sweater and you're doing it in pieces, how to pick up for when you're attaching the sleeve to the uh, the body or if you're applying a button band on it. So there was some great information um, in the uh, perfect pickup class. I really enjoyed that one. Um, I uh, took a class on several different types of cast-ons and bind-offs. Um, really interesting. Learned a lot there. And I took a third class, but I don't remember what that third class is. It's escaped me somehow. Uh, let's see. So, Stitches SLC. It was on Thursday, Friday, Saturday again. Um, I took Thursday and Friday off of work. I've taken four days off of work so far in October. Um... I may as well not have gone into work at all, but anyway, I uh, had a great time down in the marketplace. I spent way, 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 way too much money on, on every little thing. 
the market was practically a ghost town um, during um, Thursday and Friday, and I know a lot of the vendors were a little bit worried about it. Um, there were more people there on Saturday. I don't know if it was worth uh, made it worth the uh, the vendors' time. Um, those guys who were there, but I I, I did my best, you guys. I tried to commute to uh, contribute to the economy. Um, I may have gone a little bit nuts. Um, so everything else from here on out is pretty much stash with maybe a little story pulled thrown in here and there. Um, I only bought one thing, one set of, of yarn with a pattern in mind. So I guess I'll show that first uh, along with the, uh, the pattern. So here is the, uh, the pattern in mind, uh, wine country. Um, it comes in several different um, sizes, so I'm planning on making one that's uh, shorter, about here. Um, I got a free uh, coupon. You can't see my coupon numbers. It doesn't matter because I already used the coupon numbers to uh, pick up that pattern. Since I had bought some skeins of yarn, they gave me a coupon pattern. Anyway, so I have three of these uh, wonderful skeins. This is a worsted weight. Um, this is from, let's see, Stunning String Studio. Turn that around right there. Stunning String Studio. It's a worsted weight, 100% superwash merino. Right there. The color is regal purple. Um, it's a nice, more of a red purple fading to deep, deep, almost, almost black. Um, three of those. I had initially wanted to pick this up for a sweater. My parents were home from Brazil for, for two weeks on, on leave from their uh, ecclesiastical mission. So mom said she would knit me another sweater. I just needed to find the yarn for it. And I thought this would make a beautiful, beautiful um, dark purple sweater but they, I needed nine skeins and they only had five, so it wasn't going to work to get the skeins fast enough so I could give them to mom and she would be able to take them with her back to Brazil. Importing anything into Brazil is super expensive, so we weren't able to do that. So, first purchase. Well, no, not first purchase, but the only purchase with a, a, a pattern in mind. And so this was purchased on Saturday. I need to take photos of everything so I can add it to my stash in Ravelry. Okay, this was my first purchase. I lied to you guys because I, I bought a kit. I bought a full on kit. So I guess I purchased this stash with a pattern in mind. Um, this is the uh, beryllium shawl. I won't show more than that because I think she sort of starts, no, but she doesn't start on the pattern on the front page, but there's information on it. And it's absolutely stunning. What really ticked me over was the, um, the shop. This is the Wool Cabin. They're a local um, store here in the Salt Lake Valley, and I really enjoy them. But they had a model out on a, uh, a mannequin, and so that really drew me in. I saw it stitched up, I saw the beautiful colors, and so I bought it. Which I understand a lot of, works for a lot of people. Anyway, so this wonderful gray from Marionated Yarns, which is uh, similar to the amethyst that I'm using in the uh, the Perfect Blend, same dyer. It's it's a fabulous, fabulous fire. Paired up with this gradient. I'm not taking them out of the package because they'll get all over the place and they'll get cat fur in them and it'll be an, uh, an absolute mess. So there's there's those two for the beryllium shawl. Get looking forward to that. I have a bag on the floor right there to uh, drop things off into as I show them to you um, so they don't get cat fur all over them. And I have to keep the cat from jumping into the bag. Let's see, what else? We'll go here. Um, let's see. What was the name of this shop? This is uh, Yarnberry Yarns. She's a local dyer. And I picked up these two skeins to do a 
two skein something or another shawl. I don't have any plans for it as of yet, but there's a ton of ideas on Ravelry and I'm sure I'll come up with something at some point in time. And then across from, what was it, the Little Knit Shop? Oh, Knitting Pretty. Knitting Pretty um, was the store. Uh, they're another uh, local yarn shop and they carry the Yarn Brary's yarns. And then this is part of the uh, uh, Liquid Candy, this Candy Shop yarns again. And this colorway is Nowhere to Go But Up. Um, from her Mary Poppins Returns collection. It's all sorts of beautiful blues and aquas and purples. Really quite mermaid-esque, I would say. So I have no idea what I'm going to knit with that, but that's okay. And then, um, so that one, that single skein, this one skein I bought on Thursday, and then on Saturday, I was back talking to her again. I was showing off my uh, perfect blend to her because dyers love to see what you do with their yarns. And so she was enjoying, you know, I showed off that I'm using, you know, Willy Wonka and um, Lavender Lemonade in perfect blend. But anyway, so I decided to buy a, a skein of Willy Wonka in her DK, DK base. And as I was talking to, to them and already charged my card in the whole nine yard, I said, yeah, I'm kind of thinking about doing something for, I would like to do like a Halloween shawl with kind of an orange, you know, and a, and a purple or something like that. And so they showed this Dreamsicle colorway. So I had to buy it right then too. So these two will go together. And after spending some time on the good old Ravelry, I've decided that I'm going to put those together to, in for Cold Pale Moon right there. Where it's beige, that will be my orange, and where it's orange, that will be my purple. So that is my plan for these two, even though when I initially purchased them, I had no plans. Oh dear, the skein hit the floor. Hang on. It's rescued. It's away from the cat hair. All right, so uh, leading leading men fiber arts. Um, they have a fantastic podcast. Oh, I should say both Yarn Brary and Candy Shop Yarns. Um, those two are sisters, and they have a really enjoyable um, podcast together that they put up about once a month. And their podcast is called Meanwhile at the Castle. So go check that one out for all of you who still do the knit things. All right, next up is Leading Men Fiber Arts. And um, Steve of Leading and Andy are the proprietors. Steve does a uh, podcast uh, for, for the yarn. Um, he does uh, dabbles a little bit in cross stitch and some other uh, crafts as well. Um, but anyway, I think Leading Man Fiber Arts is the name of his his podcast. Of course, it's not written here, but I'm sure one. I'll try to link it below if I remember. I'm not very good at remembering, seeing as I have to do the uploading at work right now, so that's less than optimal. But anyway, so three skeins from Leading Man Fiber Arts. Uh, the first one is this beautiful uh, purple. It's once again mortar of a Eh, maybe sort of a bluey ready purple. I don't know. More of a bluey purple, I would say. And this is in their uh, Show Stealer base, and the color is Heliotrope. Right there. 80% superwash, 10% cashmere, 10% uh, nylon. It is super, super soft. And I took a picture while I was there of a uh, shawl that I thought I would uh, do with this. Um, so I need to print that one up, see if I've got it on Ravelry, track it down, get it all ironed out and ready to go. All right, the other two that I bought, kind of an interesting combination. Let's see, we'll start with this one. Um, this is, you can see it's variegated. The colorway is a uh, Bent Neck Lady in their Broadway color base, which is 100% Superwash Merino. 
probably not optimals for socks, good for shawls and stuff. And then I picked up this lovely light pink, um, Tiny Dancer is the name of it. And there are touches of mauves and pinks in this, so I thought they would make an interesting combination for a, a two-color shawl. I think the lighting in the marketplace at the convention center was a little bit different because I remember thinking they were a much better match than what I'm seeing right here. So I bought them to go together in a two-color shawl. I don't know if that will end up being their ultimate destination. We'll see. But both of them are really gorgeous, gorgeous colors. So add those to the bag. Let's see. This is uh, Three Irish Girls uh, yarn. This is another DK yarn, um, and the colorway is Wisteria. You can see it's purple and speckledy and whatever else. And I was thinking this would be great for either a hat or maybe a simple cowl, a one skein DK weight cowl. That's gotten snagged on something. Anyway. And this I purchased from a booth set up by um, Wasatch and Wool, um, another local um, yarn store. They're located up in Park City. And um, they're one of those shops that are just stuffed to the gills. So that is that gorgeous, gorgeous thing. Let's see. Showed you that. Showed you that. Let's move that over here. And then lastly, and more importantly, on Thursday, Thursday, it had to have been Thursday, I met up with Ann P. of the uh, Fiber Floss and Fiction pa uh, podcast. Fiber is definitely first, floss, fiction. I think I got them in the right order this time around. Um, she is a knitwear designer and a teacher, and she was teaching at um, Stitches SLC. Anyway, best friend Lisa and I, we met her at Stitch Nanigans, and so on Thursday night we went out to uh, dinner and had a great time chat, uh, just chatting and catching up and doing, you know, just whatever. Anyway, so I bought a couple of skeins of, of her yarn. These are both the uh, Rhiannon Sock in... 75% merino and 25% nylon. Um, this one is dusk, this one is petal. Um, there are the pinks, just pull right out of that. It's really, really pretty. So I put those together thinking about doing a two color shawl. And today as I was poking around, I found, there we are. Sadie shawl. I think this was just released today or yesterday, but I really like the lace pattern. So where the lace pattern is, that will be the pink, and then the uh, more solid sections um, in one of the uh, examples is knit with a, uh, a variegated type yarn, um, except I can't show you that picture because that picture is on the same place as instructions, and so this is a paid-for pattern. So I won't show you the instructions of all the hard work of that, that knitwear designer. So that is what these two are destined to be. And that was only decided today while I was surfing the good old Ravelry. So those are my... Oh no! <laughs> There's still one more left. Um, and last of all is this adorable set of mini skeins ranging from super cute like pink into there's a purple and then kind of a nice uh, warm dusky uh, maybe it's a lavender maybe it's a blue you decide anyway so I picked up this set of um, mini skeins they're from Canon hand eyes and baby girl colorway so that's that. I haven't decided what that that's going to be. It'll probably need to join up with a solid skein of something, or maybe not. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I have lots of time to decide what I want to do with any and all of this stuff. So 
That's not everything I bought, guys. That's all the yarn. That's, uh, I counted it up and it's like 18 and a half skeins of yarn. Lots of yarn. Um, I'm gonna reset just a little bit. We'll be right back for the rest. Bags. Just in case you were wondering, I think I have become a bag lady. Uh, one of the, uh, the vendors, one of their booths, I can't even remember the name of them. Oh, good heavens. Honeybee Farm, Sweet Honeybee, Honeybee something or another. Anyway, uh, one of them is an artist, and so she just drew all sorts of funny stuff. But this was the one that spoke to me. Of course, the dark purple in the back, but the big old ball of yarn with a sheepy and a little honeybee, a uh, honey skep was just cute. And it has a, uh, a zipper across the top and um, handles, so it can be a project bag. Well, it is a project bag or a tote or whatever you want it to be. I'm just double checking to see. Nope, it doesn't have a tag inside. Man, I can't believe I forgot. I forgot where who it was that I bought this from. Anyway, so there's bag one. Let me move things around. I have a table set up over here, but it's kind of awkward to get to. Let's see, from the wool cabin, I picked up this cute little uh, notions bag bag. Um, this is Shelly, Shelly Gillian was the artist who made these and the wool cabin was selling them. And so I thought that was cute. It would be perfect to put all sorts of wonderful notions in. I really need to, I don't know, learn how to stitch with vinyl. Just get brave. Just, I don't know, just do it. And so I picked up that. This was a purchase on Tuesday, the first day, along with the uh, beryllium shawl kit. Those were purchased at the same store. And then a Saturday purchase was this wonderful um, project bag. Um, same fabrics as the other one, it, a different vendor. Good Lord, I'm just terrible. Let's see, front range bags. Uh, front range bags.etsy.com. Anyway, these are wonderful. It has pockets here on the front, um, pocket on the back. Um, zipper pull, zipper tug. Um, it has one zippered pocket. Open up one zippered pocket in here and then a patch pocket on this side for your wonderful stitching accoutrement and then a little a ring that you can open and use as a uh, yarn yarn holder. No, a feeder. Oh, there's one on the other side. So they have the yarn feeders if you desire. And so this was really cute. Uh, one of the last purchases I made. Super adorable. And so this is this is the kind of knitting bag that I really like. I like pockets. And if I was to change any of it, I would make it just maybe about that much more longer. So I could fit four skeins of yarn in it when I'm working on a four skein uh, shawl. There's that. Let's see. Now the uh, big major... Oh my gosh, I have gone completely crazy as I bought a beautiful purple um, shoulder bag from Namaste Bags. They specialize in, in knitting stuff. So over here on this side, it has the decorative tassel but and the, their tag, but they also have this cute little adorable thing that you can slip off and use as a stitch marker in case of emergency. I believe this can be used as a stitch marker in case of emergency. It's a little bit big for that, but that's all right. There is a zipper pocket here on the back. Good for keys, the things you use all the time. And then um, I love these straps. They're long enough to actually fit over my arm. Um, magnetic clothes on two sides. And then it has two giant pockets on either side, plus that zippered thing in the middle is another pocket. Let's see. On this side, this can be used as a yarn feeder. You feed your yarn in and around here. So that kind of holds on to that, keeps things from getting tangled. They have, this is a key leash, plus handy dandy measuring stick. Um, pockets for pins, I'm not sure, you can't see that. Anyway, pockets for pins over here. A, uh, a bigger pocket down here for like your cell phone, 
more pockets, all sorts of pockets. Where is that? Oh yeah, yep. Anyway, can't see very well. This other side has another interior zipper pocket. Zoop! Right there. That's where my, uh, my lip balm will go because that's the perfect pocket for lip balm. Let's see, close that up. And then open up the big one. Then the big center pocket is just a big center pocket. They said it was zip they wanted it zippered so you could put like your wallet or your phone, you know, your your super the stuff that you don't want anybody to steal in it. So that's that big pocket. So I've been waiting to show it to you pretty much before I could transfer all my stuff out of my current purse into this one. And this thing is a monster and you could easily overload it so very, very fast. So you're gonna be carrying around like 20 pounds of stuff or a foreskin project. So those, those are the bags. I feel I did, well, this was a lot. Anyway, love that bag. Love it, love it, love it. So now that you have seen it, I can transfer stuff into it and start using it on a daily basis. Now, the last little bit of random stuff that I bought it fits in a little bowl, but it's all the, the random small stuff. So here we go. Uh, this is a cute little shawl cuff. I don't even know where I, which um, shop I bought it from, but I think it was the only thing that I purchased from them. Shawl cuff. And then from Leading Men Fiber Arts, they had this style of, um, not exactly a shawl cuff, but more of a, man, they called it something different and I can't remember what it's called, but it comes off of these two, these two pegs, and so you can carefully work the pegs through your knitting, and you know, just kind of have it there as a decorative, a decorative thing. Maybe we'll put it on the. This is my crown wools from last year on the mannequin. Um, let's see pins. I bought a couple of pins. This is a spin cycle pin. I, uh, I laughed at it because it's a pirate pirate sheep. How can you not laugh at the pirate sheep? Let's see, this is a ramen bowl with uh, yarn balls for noodles and knitting, knitting sticks for chopsticks. This adorable pink sheep with a heart, or a, not a heart, with a rose. Pink, glittery, liked it, bought it. Um, my best friend saw this and said, well, if that just isn't you right now, a Christmas tree with yarn balls for decoration. Of course, I love Christmas. I'm totally into the knitting right now. Pick that one up as well. Let's see, this is the uh, pin from Stitches 2019. It's a little sheep. Because we're all about the memorabilia. Let's see. I picked up this set of purple stitch markers. I think I got these from well, Lost Etch and Wool, I believe. Cute, 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 cute. Um, everybody needs a, a thing that tells you how to do your make lefts and your make rights. So there you go. That can go into my uh, notions pouch. I bought a couple of uh, shawl pins from uh, Stunning String. Simple oval and a little heart. Shawl pins. And then the rest we have just a cute little candy shop yarn pin. Hole in the wool pin. And a meanwhile at the castle pin. That is everything that I bought. And I may as well have just about bought everything. So now I can put these all away, get them organized, tidy it away, yay, yay, hip, hip, hooray. Whee! I know, right? I know, I had absolutely no sense and spent all the dollars. So that's my adventures at um, Stitches SLC. 
totally worth it. Um, in my last class, one of the uh, organizers came in and they were kind of talking a little bit with the teacher and they're not sure, they want to come back, um, but they're having a hard time finding a convention center that is not booked up that has, you know, the correct space for the marketplace and the number of classrooms that they need. Um, they teach 10, no, way more than 10, maybe 15 um, classes, 15 classes in the morning, 15 in the afternoon. So they need a lot of classroom space to go along with the uh, marketplace space. So um, the uh, SLC Convention Center uh, didn't have this, have an opening for them next year. They weren't sure if they're coming back next year. They sounded like they wanted to. I certainly enjoyed it and would like for them to come back because there's so many more knitting classes that I need to take. So there is all of that. What are we going to do, princess? I guess we can talk about the everything else. So here's the uh, news notes nonsense. Work has been going along pretty good, just doing the things, making the reports, doing the journal entries. Um, it has picked up a little bit since the football season started and now that basketball is gearing up to get going, I'll be far, far more bus busy than I was all summer and I'm actually looking forward to that, but that kind of means I don't stitch as much or I've got other things so I kind of take a little bit of a shorter uh, lunch break just so I can keep on, keep on, keeping on, keep on trucking, uh, doing my thing. Um, I mentioned my parents came home from Brazil for two weeks. Uh, the area of their mission, they work at the uh, Fortaleza Temple in Brazil, in Fortaleza, Brazil. Um, the temple was closed for two weeks for uh, deep cleaning, and so they kind of thought about it and said, well, we could fly all the kids down here, but then we have to plan where to go, where to eat. Um, they're not... Uh, Fortaleza is a great city, but they live kind of on the outskirts, so there's not a lot of places you can walk. You have to um, either take Uber because there's not a lot of public transit in their corner of the city. Um, so they kind of felt like that would be a logistical nightmare and it would be just easier to come home. So they came home for two weeks and it was kind of, it was kind of nice, kind of fun having them around for two weeks. Um, what else did we do, Kat? I got brave and I blocked um, my uh, crown wools. Um, this is by Casa Pinka Crown Wools, um, last year's 2018's uh, Mystery Stitch Along. So I got brave, I blocked it, it turned out well. I found um, one uh, string that is only halfway woven in, so I was able to trim all the, uh, the rest of my yarn ends except for the one. There's one that's only halfway woven in, so I need to finish weaving him in and then give him a bit of a trim. I uh, also blocked the... Uh, uh, Serene and my Dusky Albuquerque. Not Dusky Albuquerque. Um, Albuquerque Sunset is the uh, name of the pattern. Dusky Albuquerque is what I named my project. If you're looking for me on Ravelry, uh, my name is Kay into Jane, which is where the K and K's cross stitch comes from. K into Jane. Um, I've been thinking of rebranding the channel, um, naming it something different since there's more knitting right now than there is cross stitch. And it seems silly to be advertised as a cross-stitch channel when I'm dipping my toes into uh, more crafts than I used to be doing. So, thinking about doing the rebranding, if any of you have genius ideas of what to rename us, that'd be awesome. We are K into Jane. Um, what else is going on, little cat? Yeah, you're no help. You're no help. Um, got cold. We've had the weather come in, it got cold. Um, let's see, I went up to Idaho, had a wonderful uh, weekend up there, puttering around with my bud. Um, going up, not next weekend, weekend hereafter, like the 1st of November, going to go up there. We're going to have a good time, putter around. Hopefully it's not too cold. I don't want to freeze my little toes off. I might freeze my little toes off anyway. Um, things are just good. Just puttering, put gut, you know, not super exciting. Not, not bad. Just kind of on the up and up, up and up, simple, easy trajectory. My life is good, and I am really happy with it. So, you know, no complaints, no complaints, my friends. Um, thank you for every one of you who has stuck around with me for these past four years. Yep. Well, past three years. We're probably about three and a half years into it. 
Um, this is my fourth season, although season four only has two episodes so far, but be that as it may. Um, what else? Thank you everybody who has stuck around. Welcome to everybody who is just finding me for the first time. I hope you find a little something you like. Um, I say um a yacht and that doesn't bother me. So I think I'm going to sign off. Simple as that. I hope you guys have a good day and a good week. I hope you get to stitch everything that you are looking forward to stitch, being it cross stitch or knit stitch, or even if you're purling. Um, have a great one, everybody. Remember, one step forward, one step up. Hugs and stitches. Bye.